If you've been in the Ruby fandom for a while, you may have come across some fan-made animated trailers, made by some very talented people who animate their own original characters in the Ruby style, creating their own trailers and stories for them. And one of those teams that was created was Team Dark, made by Raxicori. Link in the description below to all of the trailers that have been released thus far for this team, and they are absolutely incredible. The amount of progress that Raxicori has made from posting his first trailer to posting the fourth one was amazing. I love all of these characters and I really look forward to seeing more of them. But Raxicori was nice enough to allow me to include Team Dark in the Phoenix Festival tournament. So in preparation for that, today we're going to be taking a look at Team Dark, breaking down their abilities, their weapons, and what we know about their semblances and abilities overall. Now, Team Dark will start off in the order that they were released in the trailers. The first trailer was the Lone Hunter trailer. This trailer introduces the character Wraith. He is a Faunus, and we don't really know much about him. He's very much a man of mystery, but very proficient at fighting against Grimm. He's appeared in three of the trailers so far. He's obviously the Lone Hunter one that initially introduced his character, but also appears in the Crimson trailer that came next, and the Sunrise trailer that was the formation of the entire team. Now, Wraith fights with dual blades that can rotate on his arms, and he is very proficient with dust. These blades also have rifles built into the blades themselves, so he can essentially do what Ironwood does with his gravity dust, except Wraith did it first, and from what we see in the animations, it seems like he's using wind dust. They aren't as powerful as Ironwood's shots, as when he fires his guns, he doesn't get launched as far into the air as Ironwood does. I think that's just the difference between the amount of force that wind dust and gravity dust has. Now, he's very much a speed fighter, able to launch himself into the air and pretty much do what Ironwood does as well able to move mid-air back and forth at sharp directions to avoid attacks, and on top of that, his semblance very much helps with being able to detect attacks as they are happening. His semblance, we don't have an actual name for it, but it is a sensory type semblance. He's aware of the world around him, so it's very hard for people to actually sneak up behind him and surprise him with attacks. Now, it does become difficult as he's more used to fighting against Grimm and not really comfortable fighting against humans, so Wraith's semblance is fairly draining when it comes to fighting humans as they move in very much different ways than Grimm do. I'm guessing it would be a lot easier to sense the Grimm than numerous humans, so in fighting in this tournament his semblance is going to drain his aura fairly quickly, but he's still a very fast-paced fighter and can use the momentum that is gained from firing his rifles to deal some pretty heavy blows on top of that, so he's definitely a very strong fighter. Next we get to Crimson Stride, introduced in the Crimson trailer. Now this character is one, after watching all four of these trailers, you might not get, but he uses different weapons in the Crimson trailer and the Sunrise trailer. He is more of a jack of all trades. He doesn't focus on one weapon specifically, but picks the right weapon for the right situation. We saw him use a large one-handed axe as well as the shield that seems to be built into his armor in the Crimson trailer, that dealing blow against heavily armored opponents like the spider we saw him fight, and in the Sunrise trailer he also used a great sword, a two-handed sword to deal heavy damage to this giant monster that was regenerating. And his semblance on top of that definitely makes him much more of the tank of the team. He's more of a slow fighter, and his semblance is simply hardening. He can harden his aura and lock his joints so he becomes essentially an immovable object. We saw this in his Crimson trailer when the giant Grimm was attacking him. He was able to lock his joints and block that attack. Now, this isn't really that useful when it comes to fighting smaller opponents. It's more dealing with heavy hits, but he's still very much a tank and would be someone that would be very hard hard to take down. For analyzing in this tournament, we're going to have to assume that he's only going to use either the axe or the sword, as that's all we were given, but he would definitely be able to use other weapons, as we might see in future animations, etc., and will be a force to be reckoned with. Now, even if he is using the great sword, it's probably likely he could use it with one hand, and since he is pretty much the only fully armored character we've really seen in, I think, all of Ruby, really? There isn't really characters that are wearing just fully clad in armor. So Crimson is definitely going to be difficult to take down, and I think he also has that shield automatically built into his armor, so even wielding the greatsword or the axe, he would be able to use that. 
Now, the next character that was introduced in the Ashes trailer is personally my favorite of Team Dark, but Ash Umbra. She is a brawler, using both her arms and legs in battle, wielding her weapons named Fiery Feathers, armored gloves and boots that she uses to deal a flurry of blows against opponents. The gloves also have extendable blades that come out so she can deal piercing damage on top of that. She's very much a speed fighter along with Wraith and also the last character, Dawn Eos of the team. Three of them are speed fighters and Crimson is more of the tank. So definitely, you know, accounting for the different weaknesses and strengths of the team, they are pretty rounded out. Now, Ash definitely has the most tragic of the trailers, as it seems that her twin sister was killed by a Grimm, and that's partially her motivation, or a majority of her motivation, for moving forward in part of the team, fighting against Grimm, etc. And that might factor into the influence of her semblance, being mirror image. She can create a clone of herself that mirrors her every movement. Even if that means that the clone might be floating in the air, it will still do that. It is an aura construct that can last for a couple seconds and fight alongside Ash by mimicking her movements. Useful in certain situations when, of course, a mimicked movement would be able to damage an opponent or be useful of some sort, but in other situations it may not be as useful, possibly blocking an attack or, depending on how far this clone is created away from Ash, could definitely be very useful, especially when it comes to close combat. And then we get to the final character of Team Dark, which is Dawn Eos, the leader of the team. And she is a squirrel faunus. Ash is a faunus as well. Crimson is the only human of the team. But Dawn has a squirrel tail, definitely the most prominent of the faunus traits. I'm not sure what faunus trait Ash or Wraith has at this point. Probably be revealed at a later time. But Dawn Eos is definitely an extreme extremely skilled fighter, and due to being a squirrel faunus, having, you know, the squirrel inspiration, she is very good at moving around terrain. Nothing really seems to slow her down, and when it comes to wielding her weapon, which is Daybreak Star, essentially a Fuma shuriken, being able to wield that takes an incredible amount of skill. With four rotating blades that are on it, as well as being able to separate them out to wield two blades individually on each hand, or combining them together to just have one blade on each hand, is a very versatile weapon, and to be able to throw that out, catch it, and spin it around as much as she does, that is an incredible amount of skill when it comes to fast-paced combat. And she was able to hold her own against the monster that she was fighting in the Sunrise trailer fairly well. She did get overwhelmed when she was disarmed, but still, to be able to hold her own against that was pretty incredible. Now, we don't know what Dawn's semblance actually is. Raxacori is keeping that a secret to be revealed at a later time, but it is something that helps her lead her team. That is all the information I was given. But Dawn is definitely a very capable fighter, and combined with the rest of her team, they make a pretty solid force. Crimson Stride being the tank, as I've mentioned a couple times before, being able to take any big hits that might be coming towards the opponent, and then having Ash or Dawn rush in to attack from the ground, being able to deal a flurry of blows against an opponent, and then Wraith being able to launch himself into the air and attack from above, as well as being able to flank opponents. Like, they're a very skilled team and are going to be definitely contenders for the Phoenix Festival tournament. Again, I highly suggest you check out all of the Dark trailers, as they are really incredible, and I really hope to learn more about Team Dark as more animations come out, as we learn more from Raxacori about the team in general. And again, thank you to Raxacori for allowing me to include Team Dark in the Phoenix Festival Tournament. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. How do you guys like Team Dark? Do you like learning more about these fan-made characters? I definitely plan on doing more videos in the future of other fan-made characters, not just ones that have been animated, but other ones from other people like me in my Discord server or who have commented on my videos, etc. That won't be for a little while yet, just putting that out there, and you know, you'll need a decent amount of detail and backstory for the characters for them to be featured, because I'll need to have enough to talk about, analyze, etc. But I do want to do videos on fan-made characters eventually. Probably won't be until either during or after Volume 8, just to give a general timeline, as everything's focused on the Phoenix Festival Tournament and other content right now, but, you know, let me know what you guys think about Team Dark, about other fan-made trailers, fan-made characters, etc. I look forward to hearing what you guys think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and enjoy Team Dark, make sure to subscribe to Raxacori and also myself as well if you want to see more analyses like this. Tweet me at PhoenixKnight7, join our Discord server, link in the description below, a lot of OC discussion going on there, and the Phoenix Festival Tournament discussion, 
etc. So hopefully you guys will enjoy all that. Look forward to more content in the future and I'll see you guys in the next video.